here back with another uh, GCS Army maintenance pool operations videos helpful tips, right? So we're going to continue our series today with the CMDP series on part eight, and this is part two of the general maintenance management operation checks 16 through 30. So I hope you had a uh, chance to watch the previous video where we go over the first 15 checks, go over the regulations, give you some pointers, give you some uh, material resources that you can use, right? So in this series here, I'm just going to warn you, um, or oh, this part, this is a little lengthy. However, give me some good material. And also, um, we're going to touch on ARAMS, but we're not going to go too far into ARAMS. Uh, we're going to do a separate class. We're actually going to go into ARAMS and actually build files and records and labels and so forth, right? So we just want to throw that out there. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. The channel is definitely growing, and I really appreciate it. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll jump into general maintenance management operation checks 16 through 30. All right. So like I said, these are checks 16 through 30. OK, so make sure you go back and watch the previous video. So after uh, the, well, general maintenance management operation is going to be a three part series. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty lengthy. So. Let's just start with the check 16 here, okay? Units will validate equipment usage. 750-1, paragraph 4-10. So things I verify during this check is quarterly odometer, miles, hours versus the, uh, the system of record, right? So one thing to keep in mind, um, I'm going to show you guys when we actually do our uh, PMCS portion, but I created a, a little, little sheet where there's like seven questions uh, for 10 vehicles. So when I do, when I, when I grade or observe their PMCS portion of the CMDP, I go around and have the operators take the sheet and I pick 10 random vehicles. So those 10 random vehicles that I pick, that I'm checking the odometer mileage, the manufacturer dates, the 5988s, all this stuff, I use through the whole inspection. That, that's also when I do their service packet review and so forth, right? So keep that in mind. So. Here's an example of a memorandum. Now, if you want to copy this memorandum, be more than happy to share it with you. Just email me. But this is just saying on 26 August 2019, we conducted 25% of validation of equipment versus the actual odometer reading, right? So you're just going to put your serial number, your model, GCS and mileage, and the odometer. So like we learned in the previous video, if it's 20% more off, then hey, you got to do 100%. So here you go. Uh, low use equipment, like I said. Um, yeah, this is 750-1, paragraph 4-2. Okay, it talks about the uses criteria, the hours, and so forth, right? So 750-1, paragraph 4-2. If you look down here where the big red arrow is, units will conduct a 25% validation of equipment uses data in LIS or GCS's Army versus the equipment actual reading quarterly. If it's 20% off, you must do 100%. So let's talk about check 17. When support is required for local organization and commands in a unit using external SOPs, these organizations should request support. So certain things I look for in this check are external SOPs on hand, so forth, the SSA, the SMC, uh, LR, LRC, INDE, so forth. If there's external uh, organizations they're using, do they have an SOP present, right? Um, do they understand the procedures? Do they under, understand the procedures how a passback memo works? You know, does it go to brigade? Does it go to division and so forth, right? So just keep that in mind. So here's 750-1, paragraph 3-12 uh, and 3-13, where it talked about pretty much, you know, all the external maintenance support facilities, right? Everything that, that we can use for support, okay? Check 18. Commanders will ensure units coordinated with installation or designated AFSBNs, okay? So AR-700-4, installation AMC logistic assistant representatives. Contact information for the, the AFSBN in large, right? Do the units know how to contact TACOM, CENTCOM, so forth? Do they know how to do that? So one thing is cool that I don't think we take advantage of, if you, especially with like TACOM, CENTCOM, um, if, if you need a class or you need help, they will schedule a time where they'll come to your unit and they'll help assist and train. So if you look here, right? So use of logistics assistant personnel, LARS, right? Purpose, 
provide advice and guidance to the commanders to assist them in attending uh, and sustaining material readiness. Analyze, advise, assist, and train in areas of logistics. Training will be supplemented, not replaced. Okay, so it's not it's not solely the large responsibility to train, right? But you can reach out to them and they will give you training in the following areas. Functionality, concept, uh, operations, maintenance, supply support, modifications, disposal, so forth. And just keep that in mind. Use your large to your advantage. It is an easy way to plan like a, uh, a LTT, so forth, right? So recently I contacted TakeCom. They did a full four-hour block for me for my uh, transportation company where they went over basic troubleshooting, basic issues with the EQs and the PLS systems. That it's it's easy. You just reach out to the large and they will assist you. Check 19, quality control must be fully integrated into a maintenance operation, right? So this is 750-1, paragraph 3-7. Uh, so are there appointment orders? And does the SOP clearly define the responsibilities of quality control, right? So quality control, QAQC program, that's like the cornerstone of your maintenance program. Like you may have mechanics doing work, but are they doing quality work? Are they actually doing the inspection? Are they doing it correctly, right? So quality control must be fully integrated, like I said, into maintenance operations, okay? The identification of equipment faults, compliance with repair procedures, equipment standards contained in the TMs and equipment specific publications. So here's an example of uh, QAQC procedures in one of the SOPs that I wrote. If you want to copy this, make sure you reach out to me. Like I said, like as usual, I'll give it to you. But basically, right, sound internal is the key to effective maintenance program. Inspectors are to be appointed in writing. Inspectors will not produce a QAQC checklist for dispatching. Like I said, you make sure you check with your local uh, regulation or, well, yeah, local regulations or policies. Um, like I said, if you want to copy this, let me know. Check 20, units will conduct controlled exchange and will maintain controlled exchange documents and controlled exchange log in accordance with 25-400-2, right? 750-1, paragraph 4-9. The things to verify, okay? Are all copies of um, control exchanges transactions, are they filed? Can the unit tell you who is authorized to approve control exchange? Um, I guess it was about four months ago I went down to the unit and they said they were in the process of doing a control exchange. And I questioned it because one, I didn't see it. And I didn't see it. And then they thought the company commander could authorize a control exchange. That's not how it works, okay? Does the SOP mention control exchange? And what is the process? Does the unit understand how to do the control exchange in GCS's army, right? There's a whole EUM plus uh, transaction guide on actually how to complete a controlled exchange in GS GS GCSS army with a workflow, all right? So control exchange, okay, like I said, you know, control exchange, removal of serviceable equipment, unserviceable, rec uh, immediate reuse and restoring a like weapon system or item to FMC condition, okay? So you do a control exchange only authorized when they're not available from SOS within the uh, assigned priority designator, okay? A valid requisition, which means you will requisition the part. Uh, maintenance efforts required to restore the uh, unserviceable material involved in the condition with the MAC authorization, okay? So keep that in mind. There's a whole bunch of policies, procedures, and rules and regulations when it comes to controlled exchange, all right? So one thing I want you to, to look at right here on the right hand side, all right, if it is the only means for providing an FMC end item or weapon system to support a unit within the time frame indicated issue priority designator, right? We talked about that. But underneath window number two, approved by the first O5 commander of the owning equipment and sustainment maintenance commander. All right. Control exchanges are not authorized on ORFs. I know a lot of us don't have ORFs, but I did have a few ORFs when I was in Korea with the uh, uh, MLR, MLRS uh, systems. Just keep that in mind. So, like I said, on the uh, left-hand side here, here's an example of a controlled exchange. All right, memo. And then also, here is part of the transaction guide when actually completing a controlled exchange in GCSS Army. So, if you look up the transaction guide, create controlled exchange notification or work order, you can follow it right from there, step by step. If you also, I do have this uh, on digit, so if you want this uh, uh, UN Plus transaction, let me know. Check 21, commanders will conduct inspections and staff business to determine command maintenance operations, okay? Document all faults to ensure corrective actions are taken to ensure accuracy of 
readiness reporting, right? So things I look for, two years worth of inspections present, are they signed? Are re-inspections or get well inspections being conducted? So we may, well, one area we do well is we inspect units, but we fail to do the re-inspections or the get well inspections, okay? So we're gonna look at that in a minute. So like I said, here's right out of the regulation, talks about the CNDP, um, when you're supposed to have it, you know, brigade and below, six months, check 22. Units will establish a safety program and appoint safety officers, okay, so things to look for. Appointment orders present, safety, uh, SOP cover safety, right? So motor pool and safety, shop safety, every unit SOP will address safety, motor pool operations, field maintenance, linked with safety okay so just keep that in mind here's an example of a maintenance nco uh, appointment orders and here's an example or part of an example of uh, a safety portion of the sop for maintenance okay just going over the roles responsibilities personnel shop areas um, equipment lifting devices tool safety uh, class three basic load uh, hazard material handling you know, and you got to cover your your welding, your your all that stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff that you have to include when it comes to safety. So if you want to copy this in detail, like I said, this is only just a few uh, first few pages. I think the uh, my safety SOP is probably like 20 pages, but it covers everything you need to cover in your SOP that is a requirement. So check 23 units will ensure a quality deficiency uh, program is in place and managers have access to the system. All right, so here's the website, www.pdrep.csd.dissa.mil, right? So things to verify, do they understand the process, and do they have access to perform the, the PQDR, right? So PQDR, this is right here, is telling you, okay? So material subject, QDR, EIR, purpose of submitting is to report conditions that are a result of below standard quality and workmanship or material deficiencies to file claims and uh, initiate failure credit from so forth right so there's a lot of stuff um, that i know that come in broke or damaged the proper way to do it is is to do do this here okay so pqrs like i said will be submitted investigated and tracked uh, pqrs will be submitted where they are defective non-conforming condition detected or newly newly worked government owned products okay so there's a bunch of regulations to cover this uh PQDR deficiency report. Okay, this is just some more information on the PQDR. Um, example, here's a website. So if you have someone come to this screen, it's either they are locked out or they do not have an account. Okay, so keep that in mind. If they can't access it, if they get this screen, they're full of crap. All right. So check 24, right? So uh, this is one thing that every motor pool I go to, I don't see enough of okay delivered uh risk assessments will be used for maintain for maintenance and and driver training operations so this is three uh 385-10 600 55 and 750 one so does the unit have risk assessments posted do they brief their mechanics and operators and what i normally do is i find a mechanic and ask where's the risk assessments posted all right so that last one that third thing that i ask is is probably the most important so here are some uh, risk assessments that I did when I was a motor sergeant, when I stood up the uh, fill feeding company here on Carson. Um, initial final road test, I did a risk assessment for when, we, when conducting scheduled services, you know, talking about uh, jack stands, lifting devices, environmental spills, uh, power tools, so forth, right? Uh, also conducting command maintenance, uh, driver's training. Uh, I got a couple more on uh, welding operations. Um, battery uh battery charging right so anything you do you should have a risk assessment for it. now you can have one big risk assessment and have it posted so one thing i normally do is when i was a motor sergeant every week on the monday i would brief the mechanics hey this is the risk assessment this is where it is these are the things that uh, we can control these are the hazards this is how we're going to implement right so everybody's on page so if you want to copy these risk assessments just go ahead and reach out to me and i'll get them to you Check 25, first line supervisors will ensure crews are trained to operate equipment and perform PMCS properly, right? So 750-1 and unit training uh, calendars. 
So the check I do, unit training schedules and training rosters, hands-on demonstrations and instructions. So this right here, um, I know for my organization, for PMCS like certification, we've put that on ma uh, the master driver, but we have a maintainer teach it because who knows the equipment better than a maintainer, right? So we have a bunch of tests that we have we do and so forth. So if you want a copy of like a PMC uh, PMCS certification test, let me know. I can get that to you as well. Uh, check 26, maintenance operations such as motor stable services, sustainment training, PMCS will be annotated on the training schedules, okay? So there's a couple copy, a uh, couple different training schedules here. So if you look, you know, you got command maintenance. Like I showed you in the previous one, they had, uh, they had a couple services on there. So yeah, so you're going to look at command maintenance. Uh, are they doing any low density training? Do they have a maintenance meeting? So forth. Anything that's maintenance related, right, should be on here including your services and your 60 day dispatches, which we seem to be struggling with. Uh, check 27 commanders will utilize external maintenance training resources, right? So list external maintenance uh, POC phone numbers. What resources do they use? Take um, comment, et cetera. Are POCs posted, right? So you don't have to have a post on the wall, but can you can you quickly reference who I need to contact for external maintenance training and support? So here you go, uh, commanders maintenance training, okay, analyze, develop, train leaders, train first line leaders. This is the commanders maintenance training, okay. These are the uh, these are considered to improve your maintenance training and your overall maintenance programs. And this is us, uh, DA PAM 750-3, paragraph 5-5. Uh, checks 28, 29, okay. Units will have a current ARAMS account established and ensure all offices, shops, and functional areas they inspect use ARAMS, okay. So ensure there's an, an approved oral, right? So I can't tell you how many units think that they're slick and they just take someone else's oral and put it on the side of their filing cabinet and so forth, right? Go in the system, verify that they have a valid account for ARAMS and so forth, all right? So there you go. Here's 25-400-2, uh, okay? It talks about this. All right, record ma uh, management officers and officials. Okay, it will be appointed in writing, so forth. Another office where this is just an example here of orals prepared and, you know, all that. Like I said, we're going to get further into uh, ARAMS in a, about a couple weeks. So here's the ARAMS website, all right? So make sure they can log in, they drop down, and so forth, right? So if you look here, when you log in, it'll tell you it's oral if it's approved. If it's draft, it's pending approval, or if they don't have one, all right? So keep that in mind. That's that's how you can tell if the unit truly has a approved oral. So approved records, like I said, this is just another example. These are all the records that they are approved to have under their oral, all right? So they, here's an example of the ARAMS appointment MFR, all right? Check 30, okay, records will be established, labeled, and contained in records filed labeled in accordance with ARAMS, all right? Use a uniform system of label placement. Are records filed correctly and are active and historical records kept separate, okay? So the filing caps can also be labeled correctly. So labeling procedures, okay, we're not gonna go too far to that, but here's an example of ARAM file examples, all right? So as you see, they have all their binders labeled with the ARAMS label. They have all their drawers labeled. Uh, for example, if you look to the uh, right-hand side, 500 Alpha through 600 Echo. You know, these are all 2020, these pictures were taken in 2021, but the unit has updated to 2022, right? So records 500 Alpha through 600 Echo are kept in here, and that's medical through personnel, right? That's good. That is awesome, right? They got the active label. They got it going on. All right, so if you look, there's our uniform uh, ARAMS labels. Not too bad. You can use a little bit more work, but we're getting there, right? There's some more examples of the ARAMS labels. Here's a copy of some of their binders on how they put the ARAMS labels in and how it talks, you know, external SOPs, LRC, SOP, 247, you know, 
everything, TMD, Tool Room, all their programs they have in binders, right? So if you keep all your records in a binder, even though in your file academy you should have the, the piece of paper, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, say, hey, this record is kept here. So let's talk about file setup, right? Like I said, we're just briefly going to hit on ARMS. I could talk ARMS for hours, but we're not going to do that tonight. So, okay, so we fall under three core, and this is what my comet team has used to train me in the uh, ARMS world. So you have your guide card, you got your dummy folder in your folder, right? So if you look at the first folder here, it'd be 600 manpower, 600 manpower, and then your folders or your mechanics or personnel behind it would be 600 delta bill. 600 Delta Fred, 600 Delta George, all right? Just keep that in mind. So here's the cross-reference I was talking about, which was DA Form 1613. Uh, so if you keep your folders, you know, such as your publications or something uh, somewhere else on a desktop or somewhere, you're going to use this form here to tell where that record is located. And it's just an example of the filing cabinet, active, inactive, what's in the files, your FOUO, your unaccompanied access, your oral, so forth, right? So that's just an example of how we look. So here's just an example on how you can set it up. So all binder labels list beginning and ending in binder and the file number, right? So unit maintenance SOT, battalion maintenance SOP. So if you want a copy of all these uh, ARAMS binder labels, just reach out to me. I can get these to you. Um, you just got to change the probably some of the wording, but they'll print out right in uh, PowerPoint for you, and you can just put them right in your binders. But maintenance management, there's all your regulations and so forth, right? Uh, tool room, tool room, CPAC, desktop references, maintenance management. So forth. You can go on and on and on. One thing I know when I go into a CNDP inspection, if the unit looks squared away, I normally don't dig as much. I mean, I still dig, but it, presentation is everything. Okay, keep that in mind. If you want some of this stuff here, just let me know. So. That's part two of the general maintenance management operations going over checks 16 through 30. So we have one more video left in this, and then we'll be going on to our uh, shop operations checks and procedures and so forth, right? So like I said, at any point you want any, any of these resources in these videos, just reach out to me and I'll get them to you as soon as possible. Um, hope you're enjoying the series so far. Like I said, I can't tell you the amount of uh, support that I've had over the series. Um, I'll see you in the next video, and as always, go ordinance.